Hello everyone and welcome back to the good stuff. We are continuing the Morphe saga and we left it off uh, in the match, uh, 1858 match against Daniel Harvitz in Paris and uh, Morphe is not doing all that great. Uh, as uh, as you already know, Morphe lost the first exhibition game uh, where he uh, was kind of forced to accept the King's Gambit, but then he also lost the two first um, uh, games of the uh, actual official games of the match. Uh, but then, like we said uh, in the previous video, uh, it was said that uh, Harvitz will not win a single game, uh, something uh, uh, Morphe uh, mentioned to Edge. And also, uh, it's very interesting that... Um, uh, it's very interesting how uh, <laughs> uh, everyone was very worried because uh, people placed a lot of bets on Morphe. He was uh, known to be a very strong guy. And uh, interestingly, after the two games that we've shown, uh, Morphe was having dinner with Edge and uh, he was joined by uh, Daniel Harvitz here who uh, was enjoying uh, the, the food uh, as well as they did, but he was also uh, gloating and he was, you know, feeling super proud that he defeated Morphe uh, in, in two games. Uh, but this is what Edge said to, to Harvitz during that uh, dinner. He said, uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Harvitz, you have not found Mr. Morphy in good fighting, uh, fighting trim. Uh, the fact is he has been preparing to meet you by not going to bed until common men are about to rise, uh, but he has promised to retire early in the future and you will then find him to be a very different antagonist. So uh, hopefully Morphy went to bed early uh, before game three and now let's see uh, wh what happens in this one. And as you see, the quote above the board, something uh, Wilhelm Steinitz uh, mentioned about the second game, uh, the one that we showed as the first game, if you've been following so far, uh, that he has no satisfactory explanation is given of how Morphe lost it. It is an explanation uh, only Morphe could have given and probably did to, to someone like his companion um, uh, Edge, but uh, to, to us uh, it is unknown, but most likely due to Morphe not even uh, taking the match seriously so far. So let's see what happens now when Morphe... Uh, uh, when Morphe starts taking the match seriously. So Harvitz with the white pieces again uh, opens with d4, but this time Morphe doesn't allow him to go for some sort of a Queen's Gambit decline setup. Uh, rather, he goes for f5, a very exotic Dutch defense. So let's see how Harvitz deals with the Dutch. We have c4, uh, e6 by Morphe, knight to c3, and now knight to f6. Uh, we have bishop to g5, attacking the knight here, and now bishop to b4, pinning the knight here. So, both players fighting for the center, and now queen to b3, uh, putting pressure on that bishop, and Morphe, uh, in a very uh, modern fashion, goes c5, defends the bishop here, and immediately attacks the d4 pawn. And already here, white could go wrong by going something like a3, black very happily trades here, and then gets a nice developing knight to c6 with tempo, and the black is very happy with, uh, with with such a setup. So instead, after this c5, uh, Harvitz grabs more space in the center. We have d5, and now Morphe uh, doesn't allow any trades. He plays e5, and already Morphe is controlling a lot of space in the, here in the center, as you can see. Uh, and here, e3. This is uh, maybe not the, the greatest of moves. Uh, e4 uh, would have been uh, more ambitious, but it's... Uh, it's hard to play such a move because it's a temporary pawn sacrifice. Then you go knight to e2 and uh, you, you are very happy here. You will win that pawn back. For example, castles, you're going to go queenside castles. And now you can uh, win the pawn because the, the knight here is pinned. But it is, a, it is a much trickier move to play. So instead, after e5, we have e3. Harvitz prepares to start developing his king's side. And Morphe castles here. We have bishop to d3 trying to bait Morphe into going e4, and while it's not a not a mistake, uh, it maybe allows white to consolidate a bit too much. For example, bishop to e2, now you can play bishop to f4, play h4, h5, and so on. White has a, white has a very good setup, for example, if d6, h4, uh, and now if h6, just bishop to f4, it's a perfectly fine position for white, and, uh, uh, well, it, it, it's okay for both, but uh, maybe Morphe can do better. So instead of... Uh, uh, well, committing to this right away, he goes d6 first, just defends the f5 pawn as it was under attack. Uh, we have knight to e2 and only now uh, h6, pushing back this bishop. And now the knight has to be captured. If you go back, uh, your bishop just gets trapped here after f4. So after h6, uh, Harvitz captures on f6. We have bishop captures, Morphe recaptures with the queen. And now a3. And now you could go back with bishop to a5, but bishop captures on c3 is also playable. So uh, bishop captures on c3 is what Morphe goes for. 
queen captures and now queen to g6, putting pressure on this g2 pawn. And now uh, Harvitz has to decide whether to castle, whether to try and uh, maybe do something else, whether to maybe castle queen side and try to use the semi-open g file for attack if Morphe captures on g2. Uh, but he decides to castle king side and this is perfectly fine. Uh, we have knight to d7, now Morphe starts bringing the other knight into the attack, and now b4, Harvitz again with the correct idea, uh, he is stronger on the queen side, and he wants something like captures and captures, and then he can uh, start uh, push that, uh, pushing that c pawn, create a pass pawn in the center of the board, and so on. So Morphe just defends it with b6, and only now f3, keeping everything flexible here, uh, waiting for, for Morphe to make an advance with uh, with one of the pawns. And in fact, if you go for something like e4, just captures, captures, bishop to c2, uh, black didn't really achieve anything. White is very happy to trade here. Uh, he can bring the other rook over to f1, and this uh, e4 pawn will not be all that strong. The bishop attacks it, the knight can also join the attack. So nothing to look forward here for black. So instead, after f3, uh, Morphe starts with h5. He wants to play h4, h3 and start an attack against the white king. So here, bishop to c2, preparing to shift the bishop over to a4 and put pressure on this knight here. Also, bishop to c6 is an idea in, in, in some lines. So, bishop to b7 by Morphe, continuing development, uh, connecting rooks, and now bishop to a4 as planned. And now, while Morphe could start with knight to f6, try to bring his knight into the game, uh, here you could run into something like f4, uh, Morphe could block this, and then bishop to c6 is very strong for white. So instead, after bishop to a4, Morphe just defends the knight, queen to f7, and here Harvitz uh, decides to capture the uh, knight, and he does. Bishop captures is played, queen captures, and now... Uh, there is no good reason uh, to capture this knight, because bishop captures knight, uh, okay, this knight is perhaps a very strong piece, but the bishop wasn't bad either. And now if you allow Morphe to capture on b4, you're going to be left with, uh, uh, well, with a backwards c4 pawn, It's a very, it will be very hard to advance it, the, the, the b and d pawn are covering the c5 square. So here, uh, Harvitz is kind of uh, forced to capture here, if he doesn't want to suffer uh, with this weakness for the rest of the game. So b captures. Uh, we have B captures, and now only now uh, we have F4. Uh, so uh, offering uh, to trade on F4, Morphe of course advances the pawn. We have E4 now closes the position, uh, and now Rook A to B1. Uh, so what do you do here? Here Morphe goes for Bishop to A6. Now he puts pressure on C4. He wants to play Queen to A4 to pile up on this C4 pawn, and now he wants to, of course, also double Rooks on the B file. So this is the plan. Uh, what will Harvitz do about it? Harvitz goes rook f to c1, and Morphe continues with queen to a4. Now putting pressure on the pawn here. Uh, knight to g3, going after, uh, well, putting pressure on this pawn, but really going after the h5 pawn, and Morphe just pushes h4. Uh, we have knight to f1, now shifting the knight over to d3, and now comes rook a to b8. And here, like I said, Morphe wants to trade off uh, the, the rooks along the b file, but also if white is not interested, Morphe will just double rooks, rook b6, rook f to b8, and then continue uh, putting pressure uh, along the queen side. So knight to d2, and now rook to b6, as planned. And here we have rook captures on b6. Uh, instead of going for something like this, you could also try something like king to f2, or maybe g3, g4, try and weaken the e4 pawn. Uh, but uh, Harvitz decides to trade right away. So rook captures, we have a captures on b6, and now comes uh, queen to b3, offering a queen trade and trying to go for an endgame. But again, king to f2 or something like g4, maybe improve the position a little bit before uh, committing to the queen trade. Uh, but okay, Harvitz goes for the queen trade, queen to b3, and Morphe very happily accepts. Queen captures, knight captures, and now b5. And with this move, uh, Morphe has created a passed c pawn, and he will be, uh, well, very, very happy to start pushing it up the board, or in this case, down the board. So c captures on b5, we have bishop captures on b5, and now knight to a5, preparing knight to b7 to go after the d6 pawn. Morphe goes rook to a8, and now knight to b7, attacking the pawn, hoping for a rook captures pawn, and then knight captures this pawn, but Morphe just defends it, rook to a6. And now it's a question how this knight will uh, will uh, be saved, because if you just allow the king to approach the knight, the knight will be lost. So here, rook to c3, first defending the a3 pawn, and now king to f8. Morphe starts... Uh, 
uh, bringing the king closer and closer to the knight so the knight has to move knight to d8 you want to play knight to e6 uh, but morphe doesn't allow it just bishop to d7 now taking care of all of these squares uh, and of course the knight now can move but you will simply capture it and then win the pawn so it doesn't really do anything so here rook to b3 uh, but just king to e7 attacking the knight and now harvest defends it we have rook to b8 but now with harvest's pieces tied down uh, on the back rank morphe starts uh, advancing his pass pawn so here c4 and uh, Staun uh, uh, sorry, not Staun Staunton Lowenthal uh, was uh, analyzing this game and he said that uh, as of this moment, the skillful manner in which Mr. Morphy terminated the game commands our praise and is deserving of close attention. So uh, as, uh, uh, as uh, he, uh, uh, he, he so advises, uh, pay very close attention. So here Morphy starts pushing the pass pawn c4 uh, and king to f2. Harvitz of course has to bring the king into the game with c3. And now comes king to e2. We have rook captures on a3 by Morphe. And now knight to c6 with check. And the knight has to be captured. If you allow the knight to come to d4, for example, the knight will be a very, very strong defender here. So bishop captures. We have d captures on c6. Now Harvitz also gets a pass pawn, but now c2. Uh, Morphe is ready to queen his pawn, but it's not a problem because Harvitz will just defend king to d2. But this position is now completely lost for Morphe, so feel, uh, for Harvitz. So feel free to pause the video and win the game for Morphe while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on spotting this wonderful idea. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is of course rook to c3. Uh, I remember seeing this uh, seeing this maneuver a uh, long, long time ago. And then when you when you have uh, such a uh, such a position in your own games, you will instantly spot it because it it, it is of course a very natural move. Uh, you are offering the rook for the queening of the pawn. It makes sense, but it it is harder. Um, it's not very hard to miss, you know, uh, if you don't know where to look. So if the rook is captured, you bring a queen into the game and it, it's game over. So here, Harvitz is forced to blockade the pass pawn. King to c1, but now just rook captures on c6. And now you have this rook and pawn endgame uh, where Morphe is just up two pawns. And this is now completely winning, uh, but Harvitz will make for uh, Morphe fight uh, for his meal. So rook to b3. Uh, and, and now, of course, defending the pawn and, and king to f6 by Morphe. We have rook to a3 and now g5. Morphe starts pushing the pawns on the king side as well. We have g3, h captures, h captures, and now again a captures, captures here. We have king to g6. Now Morphe wants to infiltrate um, uh, via the king side to go after the e3 pawn. And now rook to a5, putting pressure on this pawn. So rook to c5, Morphe offers a rook trade because he's up two pawns, so why not? Uh, and rook to a6 now. Uh, pressuring this pawn, we have rook to c3, even allowing Harvitz to grab this pawn with check, but it doesn't matter. Rook captures with check, king to h5, and now rook to d2. Going after the d2, uh, the c2 pawn, but uh, uh, Morphe says no problem, just king to g4. And here you cannot trade because after captures, captures, and captures, yes, you've equalized, but only uh, for a moment because after king to f3, King to d2, Morphe has king to f2, and now you have the opposition. White king has to move uh, from the defense of the pawn. This is not available, this is not available, so whatever you do, just captures, then captures, and of course the two connected pass pawns are winning. So after king to g4, Harvitz said, all right, we cannot capture that. Uh, rook to g2 check, but just king to f3. Uh, we have rook to g5 going after the pawn. Now again, hoping for captures and captures, but Morphe just defends it. There's, there's no problem here. We have rook to h5, but now king captures on e3 we have rook to h4 defending the pawn but here uh, morphy just played king to f3 and it was in this position that uh, daniel harvitz resigned the game as there was nothing more to be done here uh, or rather let me just check maybe maybe one more move was played uh, not really sure uh, but no 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 after king to f3 harvitz resigned as there was nothing more to be done here uh, you're playing king to g3 then the rook will have to move and then you will gobble up this pawn as well so it doesn't matter if rook to h3 just king king wherever you can go king to g4 and then uh, that's just it the rook will have to move somewhere doesn't really matter you're going to capture this pawn and now with the two connected pass pawns you are completely winning so yeah, after king to f3, not only did Morphe win the game, but he also won his first game of the match. So Harvitz is still leading in the match. It's 2-1, to one, uh, but as Morphe said after he lost the second game, uh, Mr. Harvitz will not win a single game um, 
uh, for the rest of the match. So we'll see if Morphe's uh, bold claim will, will come true or will uh, Harvitz uh, be able to, to score a point. It's still very early in the match, but, uh, you know, uh, the next game in the match, game four, is such a beauty. Uh, if you don't, if you haven't seen it, don't uh, don't Google it. Uh, you know, wait for it because it's it's quite a nice one. Or you know, do if you can't wait. Uh, but yeah, uh, that's the game. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Dursun Kamkerten, uh, Antonis Antonio, Tsun Hei Sin, uh, Mark Lepusic, and uh, uh, Christian uh, Ginot for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. Uh, as usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Continuing the coverage of the Morphe Saga, checking up on your wonderful suggestions, and whatever else happens in the chess world. So thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.